Neil Greenberg, Director of Audio Interiors. Thanks so much for joining me. My pleasure, happy to be here. So first off, Neil, we just wanted to uh, give our readers a sense of Audio Interiors, your business, what kind of services you provide and your target markets and customers. Okay, um, the company was founded in 1982. This is our 38th year in business. We're based in the middle of Long Island, New York. Our, our market is really east end of Long Island, which is a fairly affluent area known as the Hamptons. And of course, we reach into New York City as well. Uh, our company um, has approximately 50 employees. Uh, we started in 1982 in the audio and video business. And as the years go on, went on, we began to expand our service offerings um, to include uh, lighting and shade systems, uh, networks, home automation, uh, pretty much the full gamut of what most AV integrators offer today. Okay, and do you do that with, uh, is it just residential, is it commercial? Um, I'm gonna say um, In terms majority... of your, your markets that you hit. Yeah, the majority of our business is residential, high-end residential. Um, we've, we've done a few commercial projects over the years. You know, you, uh, you do a system for a, uh, a physician and he'll say, hey, can you come to my office and uh, TVs and audio there? Then you, you, you know, do somebody who's in the restaurant business and they say, hey, can you possibly uh, install some TVs and audio for our restaurant. And like most AV integration businesses, they grow strongly by word of mouth. Yeah, so quite, sort of more of those one-off types of projects every now and then. Mm -hmm. But we're okay. fortunate that, you know, being in business since 1982, we have uh, right now over 6,000 clients in our uh, portfolio. And um, many of those clients are constantly referring us to others, including designers and builders. So we're in a good position with that. Great. And I imagine um, that you, you deal with a lot of clients out there that have a lot of um, secondary properties, vacation properties to go with their uh, uh, primary exactly residences. Exactly true. And, and being geographically located, like I said, between New York City and the Hamptons puts us right in the sweet spot of, uh, of being where we need to be based. And that's important because we can head west and handle any project in Midtown Manhattan, and we could head east and go right out to any of the places in the Hamptons. And that is strategic in our success. Yeah, that, that definitely sounds that way. So along those lines and with those clients, um, I'd also imagine, especially out in the Hamptons and, and when you start getting into uh, some areas like Manhattan high rises and, and things like that. Um, we wanted to talk about architectural loudspeaker business today mm -hmm. and invisible speakers in particular. Um, so first off, just in terms of uh, invisible offerings in general, um, how does that category fit into your particular architectural loudspeaker business, which I, I imagine is a, a pretty key point with a lot of those it's, estates. Yeah, it's, it's a significant part of our business because today, just like most of our sound systems are hidden away in a rack or in some place where you don't see it, uh, people don't really want to see uh, speakers on the walls or ceilings anymore. I would actually even extend that to say that in many cases, people don't even want to see controls on the walls anymore. I used to be uh, enamored with uh, brass and custom wall panels years ago when you could turn the system on and off and adjust the the radio station and the volume. Uh, and of course, we went to the entire period of time where people were integrating uh, wall touchscreens and, and uh, even iPads and iPhones and things like that into the wall, not phones, but iPads. And now the whole concept is really to try to keep it as clean as possible, uh, have very little on the wall other than maybe a lighting and shade control and, and move to utilizing your iPhone or your um, you know, your uh, Samsung device to control your music system. Uh, people live with these phones in the palm of their hands. They sleep with them on their, on their pillow. Uh, people are, are amazingly attached to these things and they are the device that people use for control nowadays. But yeah, they've just gotten used to them, right? 
But, but to answer your question, along with the clean design of not having things on the wall, people don't really want to see the speakers. And we've seen a tremendous trend over the last five to even more years of totally invisible speakers. And obviously in integrating these speakers, uh, the clients always ask, you know, what happens if they break? And the answer is, is that truthfully, we've never had any speakers break on their own. The only time uh, we ever had a damaged speaker was when there was a, a leak caused by something else. And we also had one situation where uh, somebody was trying to install a video camera nearby and drilled through the speaker to try to pass the <laughs> wire through. But as far as reliability, I would say that the, the recessed invisible speakers are as good or better than any conventional speaker on the market. Yeah, so, so I imagine that you were probably doing um, in-ceiling and in-wall speakers to begin with. Is there, was there a project or anything uh, in particular that served as the impetus to get into um, you know, you know, what we consider really the truly invisible speakers well, now it, it that goes, you, know, you can't see it all? Yeah, it goes back a, a long time. Uh, there, there was a company many, many years ago called Sound Advance. And they were one of the first manufacturers of invisible speakers. And they were fairly complex to try to install because not only did you have to level the speaker with the sheetrock surface, but they also had a, a, a covering, a coating called a vellum, which is almost like a, a thin piece of material that used to have to go over the speaker and then be plastered and sanded. And it was a very complicated process. And one of the reasons we like the, the stealth acoustic speakers so much is that they did away with the vellum. So we didn't have to deal with that. And, you know, the most important thing is obviously to read the instructions and follow carefully how to do it. Uh, you don't want the speaker too deeply installed in the wall. You want it to be able to slightly be proud so you can perfectly, you know, make the seal with the sheetrock and have the least amount of compound or coating on the speaker. And if you install it properly and you read the instructions and watch the videos, guaranteed that it sounds great and works perfectly. Sure. So speaking of stealth acoustics, um, in terms of that being one, you know, one of your, your main invisible speaker brands, mm -hmm. um, what is it about some of their offerings? And I don't know if you want to point to any uh, specific products or just in general, you know, let's say first, um, just in terms of their features from whether it's from a, a technical standpoint an installation mm -hmm. standpoint uh, or, you know, training support, sales support, what are some of the things about stealth uh, that audio interiors really likes? Well, the, the first thing I'm going to say is that the, the company um, based out of Washington, it, it's a fantastic group of guys. And I happen to know that they started out in the sound installation business themselves. So, they had a great background in how to install product. And uh, they, they came up with just a fantastic uh, invisible speaker that actually has a full range woofer attached right to the back of the board. And these are one of the uh, few speakers invisible on the market that actually can produce a reasonably good quality bass on their own without a subwoofer. And amazingly, their LR6G, which is their smallest product with their smallest woofer, even that speaker has a really, really good bass quality. I would say that some of the other invisible speakers on the market from other manufacturers um, will sound okay in the mid ranges and high frequencies, but they just don't produce that same full range tone that, an, that a uh, stealth acoustic speaker will. And it doesn't matter which product in the stealth acoustic speaker we use, starting with the LR6G uh, up to the 8G and now their newest products, uh, they're all deliver a lot for uh, value when you consider that you don't even have to really add a subwoofer to most rooms. So it's, it's a great product overall and that's why we're such a um, you know, significant dealer with the company. So is that something where you know you're saying that obviously you don't you don't have to add a subwoofer, um, but what about losing that subwoofer sale? Is it something where 
you know, it's it's offset by the fact that you can install more invisible speakers in a multi-room audio setup or the ease of installation or anything like that? You know, believe me, I love selling subwoofers and, and in fact, building them into walls and having remotely located amplifiers. Fantastic. It's great. However, um, it's not absolutely necessary that a subwoofer be installed into every room. Uh, my business partner, uh, Larry Abrams, has uh, subwoofers in his bathroom. So he, he just, he, he puts subwoofers everywhere. I, I am just saying for the typical customer in a home theater environment, in a large room, uh, perhaps possibly even in a master bedroom, we can incorporate a, uh, a sub with, with the stealth acoustic speaker. But um, again, my point is, is that because you've got a, a nice, quality eight inch driver in an LR8G and in their LRX83 right behind the baffle board, these speakers are amazingly producing uh, a comfortable amount of bass that is, is really quite remarkable. So do you wind up uh, selling them more into uh, multi-room audio distribution systems or home theater? Or it, it would sound um, like they're perfect for multi-room audio then in that yeah, case. You know what, it's, it's really a multi-room audio product for us. Mm -hmm. I know that the Stealth people have, have uh, demonstrated that yes, this can be a home theater product. But um, in my opinion, I like to go just a little bit uh, more towards the, the audiophile home theater products for a, a true home theater. Uh, obviously, we're talking about physics here and moving a large amount of air and a, a, a high amount of SPL, uh, sound pressure level. And these stealth acoustic speakers can do a very good job, but when it comes to the real uh, slamming home theater systems, we, we tend to head in another direction, but we, we certainly do do a lot of stealth for multi-room audio. Yeah, and I would think that for uh, a lot of those large properties out there, uh, you're certainly filling a lot of rooms per job. And within those, uh, does it usually, I mean, I guess, does it depend on the size of the room? What kind of coverage do you get? And how many how many speakers typically would you install to, to fill up well, and cover? It depends on the square footage. It depends on the, the overall size of the room. Uh, in some cases, we've even done uh, eight or 10 stealth acoustic speakers in a room. Um, and, you know, again, it will surprisingly fill the room beautifully. But one thing that I am going to say is, a, is an amazing bonus of doing a room with so many speakers is that invariably when you are laying out your speaker arrangement uh, and you're using conventional visible speakers, there's going to be a joist there's going to be a sprinkler head, there's going to be some plumbing, there's gonna be something in that ceiling that prevents you from getting the perfect layout of, you know, four speakers, six is, is like winning the lottery to get six to line up perfectly. And the last thing you want the builder to do is start reframing the house. So with something like a stealth acoustic speaker, you say, hey, look, the speaker is gonna be six inches off of center, but you're not gonna see it. You'll never notice the difference in the sound. So it, it kind of just gives you that capability to tweak the, the placement without messing up the entire pattern. And you know, not only the, the physical things in the room, such as joists and plumbing, but you're also competing sometimes against light fixtures. And somehow the lighting always takes precedence. You know, those lighting fixtures have to be perfectly spot on where they have to be to light the room, to look symmetrical, to be perfect. So when you have stealth, you can kind of just, okay, your, your, your lights are in place. Now we're going to place our speakers around the lights. So it's very forgiving. That's the word. It's, it yeah, gives <laughs> it us sounds as like it. the designer uh, a, a great amount of freedom to kind of just, you know, tweak it in and, and make it perfect. And in the end, you'll never see, you'll never see it. Yeah, a lot of installation flexibility, it sounds like, with that. It's all about that. Mm -hmm. Along In those fact, same, same lines, yeah. when, uh, when you're talking about, you know, working with, say, a, a lighting designer or builder or something like that, have you found that, you know, carrying an assortment of invisible speakers 
has helped foster those relationships over the years, has helped win you, uh, win you some projects that you might, you know, yeah, otherwise have had to compromise on? The, the answer is yes. The light, you know, we're in the lighting business ourselves. So, so we are very uh, cognizant of that. But uh, until they invent invisible lighting fixtures, which I don't think that's happening anytime soon, uh, you know, the invisible speakers are really the perfect partner. And, and as everybody knows in this industry, lighting fixtures have gotten smaller over the years. We used to be kind of tied to the uh, light bulbs, the lamps uh, that, that used to go in the, the ceiling. And now you can have small aperture lighting fixtures that are mudded in that are three inches, sometimes even smaller. And now that the ceiling has gotten so much cleaner looking, even adding speakers that are visible is sometimes a problem and it, it creates too much of a, a, a busy look on the ceiling. So we, again, come in with the invisible solution and people are, are amazed by it. So right. we continue to specify them every, every single day, every single week. Is it pretty much, uh, if you had to guess on a percentage of projects that you specify invisible speakers in, uh, could you come up with a number? Um, I'm going to say that more than half of all the speakers we sell right now are invisible. Wow. Okay. Uh, it used to be a small percentage, maybe 10%. I would say we're, we're half of them now. And, you know, it, it's all about the, the small appearance. If there's going to be an appearance, we, we like that small aperture look. So what was the bread and butter for many years, the six and a half inch, the eight inch, uh, they're, they're less and less important to us now. Uh, so are you talking can, about perhaps 75% of projects and, and more or so? Oh yeah, or? it's it, it, invisible and small aperture are where it's at in our business. And nice. you know, the, the one thing about these is that they are not something that you kind of go in and retrofit very often. It is something that you do have to plan because the ceiling has to be finished uh, over the speaker or co-planer to the speaker. But if you're doing a custom project starting from uh, contracting uh, or renovation, yeah, this is definitely what we want to use. Neil, tell me a little bit about the, uh, the sales and demonstration process for this. I know you said you guys have a, a, a large uh, showroom space that you work with there on Long Island. We do. Uh, how, does, how does that work with in terms of bringing in clients or bring, bringing in designers and and getting them to understand, hey, this, this is what these things are all about. Okay, well, the first thing I am going to say is that the majority of people kind of trust us. So they call us and say, hey, we know about your reputation or I've, uh, I've seen what you've done at some, another person's home and that's what I want. So no demonstration is actually necessary. But I do have some people that say, um, I'm curious about the invisible speaker, I'd like to hear it. So uh, we've built in a, um, a residential type of showroom here in our facility that has uh, the stealth acoustics built in and we bring people right into our, our showroom and we can play the speakers. We also have a uh, demonstration pair of stealth acoustic speakers that are, they are invisible, but they're in a physical wood box and we place them uh, right next to conventional speakers so people can hear the difference and those happen to be LRX 83s, and those are a get good demonstration as well. So the answer is we can demonstrate them. Obviously, the sound of what we're demonstrating is not going to be exactly the way it sounds in their room. Depends upon the, the wall surface, the floor surface, how much glass. Um, but of course, with today's uh, very popular DSP amplifiers, we can dial in the exact DQ to make it sound right for the room. Which we did. Sure. And would you would you say uh, how would you say most of the reaction is when you demo them? And I don't know if you demo them, you know, side by side with, you know, a traditional in ceiling speaker where you might say, hey, mm -hmm. here's this, but here's this sound then without having to see anything in your, on your ceiling. Mm -hmm. Are they, do I, they get, are they surprised by the sound quality? Ironically, if you go into our lifestyle showroom here in Hop Hog. We actually have a pair of Bowers and Wilkins 802 D3 diamonds with a Macintosh amplifier and Macintosh preamp. And parked on the floor right next to that is a pair of 
Stealth Acoustics LRX 83s. Now, of course, the LRX 83s are not going to compete with a $22,000 pair of floor standing B&Ws, but you will be surprised how remarkably good they sound when we switch to speakers B and people say, wow, this is, this is really pretty good. So um, like, like any other speaker, if you power it with high quality source material and a great amplifier, they'll be even better than, than you think they'll be. But um, that's our thing. We're not trying to sell these against any other speaker. We're trying to sell Stealth Acoustics as a product class unto itself. Right, yeah, that definitely makes a lot of sense. Uh, so lastly, Neil, in terms of advice that you might have uh, for other mm -hmm. integrators who are, you know, maybe on the fence, maybe they're not sure about invisible speakers, you know, they they love installing their regular architectural speakers. Mm -hmm. You know, what kind of uh, tips do you have for them in terms of, you know, being able to really kind of just dive into this as a as a category and adding it to their own portfolios? Um, I would say just, you know, trust that the end results will be excellent as long as you, A, use a, a high quality pair of speaker wires, set of wires, a uh, good quality amplifier, uh, and you read the full instruction book on how to do it properly. In many cases, we also put our stealth acoustic speakers into sound insulating back boxes. Uh, we like to do that as well. Uh, and the, the results are exemplary. We've, we've had great success with it. Uh, we're a, a top dealer that many people follow. And, uh, you know, even in, in uh, technology myself, I always like to look at the new trends. I like to, to always learn and see what people are doing. And, you know, the, the other thing I'm gonna say is that Stealth Acoustics as a company they, they haven't just rested on their laurels of making a good product and then keeping it as it is. They're always looking to improve it and make it better. And any company that, that does that is, is searching for success. And in this particular case, you know, this is why we stick with Stealth for this classification of product.